Welcome to my living room. Today my living room is all the way home to Pengrove, California. Today's all about getting your horse soft in the bridle. It's going to be a great show. Stay tuned. Well, Mary Kayankoski with Starbucks, she's all the way from Fort Bragg, and uh, she raised this horse from being eight months old, and she's done all the work herself. I'm going to ask her to do a couple tasks here, and uh, the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is see if you can just slide down your left rein there, Mary, and get your horse bent to a stop. Could you just slide down your rein and bend him to a stop? And wait till he stops. And stay bent till he stops. Could you move his hind quarters away 360 degrees? Three hundred sixty degrees. Very nice. Would you feel comfortable cantering him in there? You don't have to. Could you? Okay, give it a try. Good. That's good. I'd like you guys to give her a big hand, but I want to see her scare her horse, so give her a quiet hand here. Okay. <laughs> okay. And so go ahead and hop off, young lady. And uh, we'll go ahead and hop off for a second, and we'll talk about what we saw here. You know, in last week's episode on TV, you saw me riding one of my horses that I was doing some pretty nice transitions with. I did some lead changes with them and got them soft at the pole and did some pretty nice stuff with my own personal horse. But you're probably watching at home going, what about my horse that throws his head? How are you going to help me on that? And so this is going to be a good chance for me to see how we would go about that. You know, she's done a nice job with him, but he's got, for starters, he's a nice, big, exquisite horse, but he's got a neck that could probably throw up there and knock you in next week. Um, and he just protects himself. And so while I'm walking here, let's see if I can... Don't look not too concerned about using my legs just yet, but my hands, and I'm not going to pull harder on him. You'd like to. Maybe you hear guys say, match the resistance. If you match, resi match the resistance on him, you'll be upside down. And so you can see right now, I'm feeling his tongue with my right hand, and I'm not letting go of that tongue, but right when he let go, I let go. And so I want to feel that tongue again with my right rein, and with my left rein, I'm making little lateral adjustments at the pole. And you're saying, well, you're, how can you be doing it at the pole when you got a bit in his mouth? Well, it's talking to his mouth, but it's affecting that pole up there. And notice I'm not getting a reduction of speed. Hey, he's falling into my leg and so forth. We'll get these things cleaned up in a moment. But right now, that was a nice little change. You'll start hearing him do that more with his exhaling like that. And... Uh, You'll probably maybe start to see him start slobbering here in a little bit too. That's a nicer change right there. But like again, I'm just working that pull, but he's resistant from that pull back. Until I get that dialed in, I'm not gonna get the body like over there and get him more precise. And so we're gonna keep walking him off here, but this is where the human comes along, maybe like let's put side reins on him or, or draw reins and things of that nature. And what you're doing, you're only putting more resistance in your horse, I think. And I'm going to keep, keep his cadence going. Hey, I'm, I'm feeling that tongue with that right rein. My left rein, I'm, I'm just making little lateral adjustments. That bit is broken in the middle. You're going to pull it on both of them. You're going to smash that tongue with that uh, supporting side, that snaffle bit. Because that snaffle bit's broken in the middle. Hey, one side is supporting. Now let's just see if I cut him in two this way. I'm going to cut him in two where my buttons are at. Hey, this side over here. This side over here is going to be the supporting half. This half over here is the teaching half. And so I'm feeling that tongue with that snapple bit just like this. This part here is doing the adjustments here to get that pole to come down like that. So I'm going to be very sensitive to hold that tongue. And so I want to go ahead and hit that supporting side with my right rein. Now watch my left rein. Watch my left rein just making that little, I'm almost like vibrating it. 
And watch here, watch here. Watch when I let go. But you ought to be pulling harder here. It won't help you. Hey, let go there. But if I'd have pulled harder, he'd have been, I'd have, it's like uh, you just fried her brain. Let's try that again. Supporting side, teaching side, and now you're actually starting to see me use my left leg more now, believe it or not. My left leg is on him. I let go. So you're starting to see me now using my left leg more in conjunction with my inside rein. And look at that there. He's starting to give me that pull. We'll try that again. I'm massaging that inside rein. Now watch me use my, my stick a little bit. Using my stick a little bit. I'm using my, right there. Good. Hey, felt better. Let's go ahead now and try the other direction. Well, I'm gonna reverse this deal as far as the supporting rein and teaching rein. Now my left one is the supporting, the right's the teaching. And here comes, now you're saying, what, what, what do you mean by half halt, Dennis? What's a half halt? That's a rebalance. And so I'm making a rebalance right here with that inside rein, and right there, look at that. So he's starting to get more relaxed because he's getting a massage right now. You'd like getting a neck rub. He's, he's getting a neck rub right now. These are just tools. And so he's it's going to be more pleasant for him right now. Softness at the pole is very important to get the body soft because softness at the pole is softness when they're vulnerable. This is a very vulnerable prey animal. And when the head goes up, it's just an indication that they're preparing themselves to leave. And so I'm a predator, and I'm pulling on him, and his head's up high. He already left. He may not have gone anywhere, but he's not there mentally. He's, he's already, before he runs away and bucks and bolts and does something stupid, the alert system got to go on. That means the pole gets bracy. And so a lot of times people are riding their horses the whole time, but the horses like this the whole time, they're already prepared to get themselves in trouble. They're already bracy. They're prepared to do something maybe bad. I can turn that off by getting that. So I won't let them get in this state of resistance or bracy because before they run away or buck or bolt or rear, they get themselves prepared. I'm getting so I can shut it off before he gets himself prepared. Keeping him mentally quiet so I have two little tranquilizers now. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Join the No Dust Love membership today for only $20. Join Dennis Reese live online in his evening classes one night a week. Watch and learn horse training techniques live on select weekends. Chat and ask questions of Dennis in real time. Miss a class? Not a problem. All classes are recorded. You can watch anytime. Access to a huge online library. Special pricing for Reese Ranch Clinic. 25% off Wrangler Western wear. 15% off all horse handling equipment. Private access to a members only online forum. Get help and advice from Reese Ranch instructors. An educational DVD is mailed to your doorstep every single month. And you have access to our online classroom. Join today for only $20 a month. Call now, 800-732-8220 or log on to reisranch.com. That's reisranch.com. Hey, horse lovers, you whispered and we heard you. The Dennis Reese Horseman's Flag has been improved again. Some of you said your arms were tired from hauling all that heavy fiberglass. Our new horse flags are lighter weight for easier handling and more flexible for a more refined feel and have a light polycarbon core with a soft rubber exterior. They're still sturdy enough for a firm reinforcement when necessary, but so much more comfortable to carry. They come in four fabulous, fashionable colors, ruby, sapphire, onyx, and emerald. Of course, our flags still have an ergonomic grip and hook for safely untangling rope or cinching a difficult horse. Order yours today, 800-732-8220, or order online at reisranch.com. At Reese Ranch, we have the techniques, tools, and education system for you to bring out the best in your horse. You can succeed. The foundation for success is our Mentor Series Home Study Program, an easy-to-follow approach to training and problem-solving. Any horse lover can follow it. 
When you buy the Mentor Series, you also get one month of online support in our No Dust Love, that's live online video education program. You'll watch Dennis live and chat with him in real time without leaving home. No time to watch online? We'll send you a monthly training DVD instead. Join Universal Horsemanship live online, or we can send you a DVD. The Mentor Series Home Study Course is where you start. Don't miss out. Come and see Dennis Reese live. Call or go online for notice tour free passes for the following locations. August 3rd and 4th, Red Bluff, California. August 10th and 11th, Eugene, Oregon. August 17th and 18th, Redmond, Oregon. Get your free passes today. Call 800-732-8220 or go online at reisranch.com. Welcome back to Dennis Reese Universal Horsemanship. Imagine something's going to go wrong here. Which is going to, things are going to go wrong with these horses, okay? And so could I bend them around to a stop? I want to stay bent until he stops. But notice, I'm just not bending him. I'm not just bending him, which I'm bending him. I'm also keeping the pole soft. That means I'm making little adjustments with my supporting rein and teaching rein to keep that pole soft the whole time I'm trying to get him bent to a stop, which you'll start to see here. Because right now, he can't bend to a stop. So that tells me I can't stop him just yet. But hang in there. Just keep massaging him. Keep that supporting rein going there. So we're stopping basically vertical flexion right now. We're stopping a soft feel. And we're just like that. That was a big, big thing for him. It's a good boy. Boy. Yeah. Let's try that again. We'll ride off. And we'll see if we can bend him to a stop. But you're seeing I'm not just bending him to a stop. I'm getting him prepared to a position to bend to a stop. I'm getting him vertically soft before I go to bend him. Now I can bend him to a stop. He's prepared. And I'm looking at my right toe. I'm still using a supporting rein and a teaching rein. And I'm letting go when he stops, when he feels good. And I won't do it more than three times. We, we, we teach horses here the way we work with mules. Mules demand that you work with them the way a horse should be worked. Horses tolerate way too much injustice, way too much, too many mindless transitions. Uh, lack of preparation, but they eventually rebel. A mule won't tolerate that. And so our system's designed for mules, frankly, the way a horse should be worked. So let's go ahead and get ourselves prepared to get in position the way you get a, a mule going. You wouldn't do it more than three times with a mule either. Hey, he's out soft at the pole now. Now I'll get my lateral bend. And horses learn when you stop doing what you're doing. And so now, I was saying this is going to be a pretty good deal here. Pretty good deal. He's actually starting to exhale and breathe and relax. Let's get him soft at the pole again here. So like last week, I showed some pretty cool stuff in my horses, but now I'm kind of showing you, well, here's a horse that threw his head, and how are we going to change this up? Let's get him softer at the pole. A nice bend to a stop. Isn't that nice? Hey, that supporting rein is very important. And he's lost his balance. He got his balance. I said, good boy. I said, let, let go. Now let's go ahead and ride off. Now you're starting to see, well, gee, if I get him prepared in the right position before I ask for the move, I'm being a better leader. And I think that's something we want to look at. If I ask for him like to move his hind quarters here, I'm just not going to go start pulling and kicking and gouging. Maybe I should go ahead and approach the same idea of getting that pole soft first, not killing that forward motion. And you'll see when he says yes, he's going to say like, okay, I'm ready to go, like right there. Now I can create the lateral bend, kind of lost him there. Now I can create my indirect rein and ask him to move the hind quarters away. And when it feels nice like that, I can ride off. That's the way I'd like to see him disengage the hind quarters. Perfect precision. We'll reach in here again. We'll get the pole soft. 
this little half up, the inside rein, hey, my inside leg's doing something. Now I'm going to start using this left rein, getting the lateral bend. Now it's an indirect rein talking to that right hind foot. Hey, my supporting rein is still there feeling that tongue. I'm using my left leg there pretty firm right there. And I'm going to wait till a, a, a softness takes place. Get off that leg. See that little crankiness you got there? Watch my left leg say, hey, 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 hey. We're not going to reward that. We won't reward that expression. No, I don't think so. That got soft. I said, good boy. But see how a couple times here he kind of said, who do you think you are? He pinned that ear back, started getting a little cranky. I stayed there until the expression looked a little nice, and I rolled off. But we had a little discussion there. Let's try that again. Let's get him prepared. Get that pole soft. Create that lateral bend first. Then get the hind quarters by disengaging the hind quarters. Now feel that right foot going out with your left rein. It's the only time my left rein crosses the center of my horse. My left leg is talking to the left hind foot. My left rein is talking to the right hind foot, that indirect rein. And I'm going to wait for a little cadence, rhythm. That felt nice and we'll ride off. Okay, let's try, let's try this next move now. Now i got the disengagement starting to go. Let's see if we can actually get a little lateral move with him. And I'm going to get him prepared here while I come to you. I know I can move the hind end. If I can move the hind end, I know I can get him to go sideways. But I lost the pull. I got the pull back. I got the pull back. I wouldn't get him out of it here yet. So I'm going to stay in my leg yield, a couple more strides, just like that. I'll be rewarded that right there. And so let's get him on a little circle here, and we'll expand our circle, because we know when speed comes, he's going to try to fall in on me. Get that pole. Hey, watch me use my stick. Watch me use my stick. Watch my hands. Watch me use my stick. Watch me go right to this lateral posture. Watch me not let go of that giraffe neck you got going there. Right there. Had a pretty good little discussion there. But I'm trying to say, we've got to get off our left leg here, big boy. No, 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 no. I don't think so. Watch me move the hindquarters away, just like that. Good boy. Now we're getting things dialed in at a walk where I can actually get him on a line at a walk. How hard did I pull on him? How mad did I get? If anything, I got pretty firm by keeping that forward motion going. And you guys can do this. It's not rocket science. It's harder. But you all can do this when you start looking at it from the horse's point of view. He's just trying to protect himself. Let's go ahead and go to the right. Good boy. Okay, see if I can get him going here to the right again. He's getting pretty cool about this right leg. He's, he's better off my right leg, believe it or not. There you go. Let's see if I can trot him. I'm going to post on him. I'm losing my softness while I'm trotting him here. He's looking the wrong way. He's bending the wrong way. He's wanting to run off here. We're going to get him soft here to trot. I want to follow that tongue here to trot. Right now we're all strung out. He's getting all worried. We'll get him looking really pretty here in a moment. There you go. You're all right. You're all right. You're all right. I really got to be clear with that inside rein for him. I really got to be clear with that inside rein. And when you see me doing, I'm posting. I'm getting off of his inside hind leg and allowing that inside hind leg to reach underneath of himself. He's starting to move a lot better now. There's a change. This is what we're looking at. This horse here is an exquisite horse. He just gets strung out. When he's strung out, he gets out of balance. He must have fallen right here. I'm saying, hey, 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 hey. Don't run through that leg like that. Just trot. Good boy. There. Get off that left leg. There you go, good boy. Wow. <sighs> Coming together. So every time I touch those reins, there is a reason behind it. It is to get him in balance and in position without killing that flow. You let go three times the wrong way, you're gonna teach some bad stuff. Let's get the hindquarters again here. So I just dispelled martingales and side reins and draw reins and all that hooey. I'll dispel it right there. 
right there. It's all in your hands. Keep that forward motion intact. Little adjustments, little adjustments, little adjustments, little adjustments, <laughs> little adjustments. In my little 10 meter circle, little adjustments, little adjustments, little adjustments. Back down into a trot, back down into a trot. Back down to a trot, back down to a walk. Little half halts, little half halts, little adjustments. Move the hindquarters. See that? Watch my fingertips. Get off that left leg. Here. <laughs> Never seen it not work. Hey, it's been a pleasure having you in my living room. If I don't see in the future, I'll see you in the past. Hey, God bless you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Introducing Dr. Stephen Alday, the creator of Lubricin. Dr. Alday, can you tell me about pulse and respiration and get my horse's temperature? Well, typically we take a rectal temperature in a horse and normal is right around 100, okay? So variance between, you know, 99.78 to 100.5 is considered to be normal. Uh, so, you know, you basically would, you, your digital thermometer basically will tell you what it is, you know, right away it beeps for you or whatever. And, and, and so that's what I use in my practice as well, except, you know, the old standby glass is pretty good too. As far as uh, pulse is concerned, I normally, if I'm checking a horse, I, I will check right here along this vessel. This maxillary artery runs right underneath their mandible right here. And what you do is you basically put your fingers and you can feel it roll right there and you can use your clock. And I, I'll see how many beats I get in roughly about 15 seconds and multiply by four, okay? Uh, if that doesn't work for you, because a lot of people don't have the, you know, you, you, it's a little uncomfortable or you're not sure if you're getting a pulse or not, whatever. I mean, if your horse is standing here, you better have a pulse. But bottom line is you're not, you know, if you can't feel it. Yeah, the old standby is you can take your hat off and you put your head right up underneath here and you can listen to their chest and watch the time as well. And roughly this horse's pulse is going to be somewhere around 24 to 28 thereabouts, which is a normal resting temp or, or pulse for a horse, you know, that's in reasonable condition, this sort of thing. As far as respiratory uh, is concerned, if you'll sit and watch, you can just watch, you know, the chest cavity move when they take a, you know, a, an inspiration, there's one. And then count every 15 seconds, there's two. And then roughly you're gonna see that this horse's respiratory rate's like, you know, somewhere 10, 12, maybe as high as 16. Not likely, more like between eight to 10, 12 is gonna be normal. So those are the usual parameters that you're gonna find that uh, are, are normal for uh, uh, temperature, pulse, and respiration in, in a resting horse. Call today to order Lubricin at wholesale prices. Limited time offer, so call 800-732-8220 or order online at reisranch.com. Join the No Dust Love membership today for only $20. Join Dennis Reese live online in his evening classes one night a week. Watch and learn horse training techniques live on select weekends. Chat and ask questions of Dennis in real time. Miss a class? Not a problem. All classes are recorded. You can watch anytime. Access to a huge online library. Special pricing for Reese Ranch Clinics. 25% off Wrangler Western Wear. 15% off all horse handling equipment. Private access to a members only online forum. Get help and advice from Reese Ranch instructors. An educational DVD is mailed to your doorstep every single month. And you have access to our online classroom. Join today for only $20 a month. Call now, 800-732-8220, or log on to reisranch.com. That's reisranch.com. 
Don't miss out. Come and see Dennis Reese live. Call or go online for notice tour free passes for the following locations. August 3rd and 4th, Red Bluff, California. August 10th and 11th, Eugene, Oregon. August 17th and 18th, Redmond, Oregon. Get your free passes today. Call 800-732-8220 or go online at reisranch.com. Hi, this is Deborah Reese, and we feed all of our horses Elk Grove Milling Stable Mix Feed. What makes Stable Mix the right choice? There is no corn or molasses, and it is a complete feed that's weed certified free. It includes all the necessary daily vitamins and minerals and has bran for the coat and biotin for the hoof. For more information, go to elkgrovemilling.com.